Starting a new business, venture, and project can be daunting, but with the right team, anything is possible. Is it time to get started on turning your brand ideas into an exciting work in progress? Fiverr is offering its Fiverr Business Annual Membership at 100% free for the whole first year. You deserve to make 2021 the first step in your giant leap towards success. Fiverr Business gives you full access to their hand-picked catalog of top freelance talents, as well as a fully integrated collaborative environment. Fiverr Business gives you the tools you need to launch, scale, and manage your startup from just about anywhere in the world. But that's not all. Fiverr stands as one of the most efficient scaling solutions trusted by startups and small businesses across the globe thanks to the cost-effective pricing of most freelancers on the platform. To learn more, click the link below and sign up for your free Fiverr business account. All right, welcome back to the Halftime Report live today from the New York Stock Exchange. We've been speaking with hedge fund investor Bill Ackman. Now it's time to hear what Carl Icahn thinks of our conversation. He joins us live on the phone. Gentlemen, let me just make sure I have both of you with us uh, just for technical purposes. Carl, are you there? Bill, there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here as well. Um, you know, Carl, we've been speaking with Bill uh, for the last several minutes uh, following the, the accusations that you made yesterday. And he's essentially saying that you're a hypocrite. Uh, Carl, in your argument that you've laid out short positions yourself publicly, how do you respond? Well, you know, listen, I, I you know, I, I really sort of had it with this guy, Ackman. Uh, you, you know, uh, why don't we go back over a little history with him? I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm not going to get into you know talking about short positions as much as maybe you'd like me to. But hey, let's start out with my history with this guy. I was minding my own business. And in 2003, I get a call from this uh, Acton guy. And I'm telling you, he's like the crybaby in the schoolyard. You know, I went to a tough school in Queens, and they used to beat up the little Jewish boys. And he was like one of these little Jewish boys crying that the world was taking advantage of him. He was almost sobbing. And he's in my office talking about this Howard and how I can help him. And, uh, you know, it's like in the old song, uh, you, you rue the day I ever met the guy. And uh, so he's there and uh, talking about this company. And I actually called a friend who knew him, and the friend says, don't deal with the guy. He's in major, major trouble. And, and uh, you know, I'll just read to you some of the stuff they were saying about him. And, uh, 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 you know, this was an article in the New York Times. These guys had received, and I'm quoting, a mountain of requests for investments asking for their money back. They had suffered a devastating setback. And then, you know, does this remind you of anything? Uh, this article says, Gotham's publications of upbeat research about one company, even as the fund was quietly selling its shares, looked very much like a classic pump and dump scheme. And then it goes on to say, Elliot Spitzer, New York State Attorney General, had been investigating Gotham, its principles and their activities. And then it goes on to say that this SEC is looking into them. And, and, and you know, I really, i got to admit to you, I really didn't read this, so I got involved with this uh, Ackman guy. And it cost me, uh, it cost me money. I, I, uh, I, uh, well, because it cost you money, Carl, because the court said that you reneged on an agreement that you guys had, right? And, and a court repeatedly said that. Well, let me just say one thing. I will tell you, and I've, I've done stuff for the 70s and 80s on a handshake, and I will tell you categorically, Ackman knew that he wasn't going to get half the profits. This guy was in such trouble, he was in no position to ask for anything. At the very end of the deal, before we signed, he says, you've got to do me a favor and sign something called schmuck insurance. So that if you flip the stock, if you flip the stock, then I get half the profits. And I said, hey, I, I, I said to him, hey, Bill, I'm not going to flip the stock. I'm going to make a tender offer for it. And I did. And, and I said, and the company's going to find another buyer or I'll buy it. So you're not going to get any profits. He says, I realize that. I just got to show my investors. And he only had one or two left maybe by that time. God knows what he had left. And he said, I got to show my investors that I'm making money and all that crap. And at the end, we wrote it. And my lawyer is a great lawyer. He's with me 20 years. He's still with me. We wrote it and said, and, and we still think our, what we said is right, but, he, but Ackman got a New York court to agree that the fact that they took it away from us, we never sold it, 
they took the stock away. We voted against the deal, and they took it away. I was amazed when Ackman called me. I really was, even though by that time I realized he's the quintessential example that on Wall Street, if you want a friend, get a dog. But, 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 but Carl, I mean, the, the, all about. I know, I got to so, understand. I mean, in re rehashing the last, you know, a, a decade in which a court repeatedly sided with Bill Ackman, I mean, let's get back to the substance of the conversation. You have an issue with the way that Bill went about the Herbalife short, as aggressive and as publicly as he did. And I'd like to give Bill a chance to respond to you as well. I would love that. <laughs> Bill, please. Uh, should I go ahead? Yeah. Okay, so... Look, I think uh, what you should, I would encourage you to invite Elliot Spitzer on the show. And uh, Elliot Spitzer was our attorney general back then, and he investigated some accusations. And unfortunately, the press can write articles that say whatever the press wants to say. But ultimately, we were... What's interesting is 10 years ago, I was short a company called MBIA. And I went out very publicly criticizing MBIA's AAA rating. I wrote a 66-page uh, white paper. It's called Is MBIA AAA? I encourage you to read it. You can find it on the Internet. And I said that this company that had a AAA rating from the rating agencies was basically didn't deserve the rating, and that was had taken an inordinate risk with subprime CDOs and a bunch of other exposures and could catalyze a credit crisis. And MBIA came after me very aggressively, as Herbalife has come after us uh, very aggressively, accused me of market manipulation. Uh, they contacted the treasurer of the state of New York. The treasurer of the state of New York called Elliot Spitzer's office and said, hey, there's an evil hedge fund guy attacking our company, saying we don't deserve our AAA rating, and by the way, we're the biggest guarantor of New York State and city bonds. You might want to go take a look at this guy. And Elliot, you know, followed that lead. It's a perfectly legitimate lead, and he looked into it, and he investigated whether we were correct. And we were. I testified five or six days on the record explaining bond insurance and accounting and reserving and why 150 to 1 leverage, uh, one leverage company didn't deserve a AAA rating. And uh, ultimately, uh, they concluded we had done nothing wrong. And if you can call Elliot up himself, and he'll tell you the facts. And I, I actually got to know him after that and, and uh, have a nice relationship with him. Not a close one, but a nice relationship. Anyway, so during this period, as a result of my decision to wind down the fund, uh, we, we, had, we had a court case go against us in a merger that was ultimately reversed on appeal. I'm happy to... There's a book about this whole story called Confidence Game, which is worth a read. If we uh, had but three in, that, hours, in that context, we, could go we were winding that, but... down the fund. We were under no pressure to wind down the fund. In fact, I, I, the last tiny little asset we still have, our goal was to maximize uh, the outcome for our investors. I never went to Carl's office to pitch him on Hallwood Realty. We did the transaction over the phone, um, and I'll, I'll get into that in a second. We had uh, t you know, two bids for, for our deal with Carl Icahn. One was at a higher price. It was all cash. I told Carl that I would do a deal with him. I had confidence he could extract the value in the company. It was worth more than twice the price it was trading for. And that's why Carl agreed to pay me $80 a share in cash, which was less than what we could have gotten selling. We could have sold the position for 90 bucks to someone else or 85 I don't remember the exact number. Um, but with Carl, uh, I got $80 plus what he called schmuck insurance. Now, you, again, who figured out uh, the schmuck insurance uh, terminology? Really, it was Carl Icahn. It was 50% of his profit to be sold in three years, and the risk to us was that Carl got the company. If Carl bid for the company and got it, we'd get nothing. But if someone else who had a lower cost of capital than Carl ended up with the company, uh, then Carl would have to pay us as long as the deal happened in three years. And I thought he might just wait three years before making a bid or just hold the thing up so we wouldn't gotten, didn't get paid. That was the risk to us. Now, I was concerned about dealing with Carl Icahn because Carl Icahn, unfortunately, does not have a good reputation for uh, being a handshake guy. And if you notice the agreement that was written, I insisted we keep it under 10 pages. There's a simple example in the agreement. You never see a lawyer. Lawyers, I told the lawyers I wanted to put an example in. They said, no, no, don't put an example in. You know, we'll just use words. I said, we can use words, but I want to have an example. I want to make sure there's no confusion here. When Carl says this transaction was a merger, okay, what happened in this transaction is the company, Carl bid $100 a share for the company. The company uh, hired Morgan Stanley to sell the company. Carl raised his bid to $120 a share, and the company made a deal to sell it to a REIT whose cost of capital is lower than Carl's. He got, they got $136 a share for the company, and the transaction was structured as a cash-out merger. Stick with me, because this is important, and Carl has been uh, maligning my reputation, so it's very important that we get to the facts. All of this is provable in the courts. Okay, so let me just finish. And uh, the transactions were cashed out in a cash-out merger. Okay, Carl got cash for his shares. He no longer has the shares. And very clear. 
Okay, Carl made all kinds of arguments saying he didn't do it voluntarily. That's true, but our agreement never said voluntarily. It said if he sold or otherwise transferred. Right. Why do we say sell or otherwise transferred? Because we wanted this to be the Look. broadest possible reading that, some, that Carl couldn't work his way around the agreement. I've got a few more points to make. Stick with me for one more second. Okay. I'd like, yeah, one more second, because, I mean, look, we can, we can go back through the whole merits of the case. Look, as I, I mentioned, I think, the I think this stuff is important, okay, because, again, when someone goes on TV and tries to slander your reputation, I think you have an, you know, an given a proper opportunity to respond. Fair okay. enough. Carl, by the way, made a lot of money with us, okay? He bought the stock from us at 80 He sold it for, 130, for $136 a share, okay? When I, when I didn't get paid within the two business days I was supposed to get paid after the deal closed, I called Carl up, I congratulated him on the deal, and he said, what deal? And, he, and I explained it to him. He says, no, 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 I didn't agree to that. I said, Carl, we have a 10-page agreement. It's a really simple agreement. I, I don't want, you know. He said, I'm not going to pay you. I said, well, you know, then I'm going to have to sue you. And, and he says, go ahead, sue me. It won't survive summary judgment. And I said, Carl, we're going to get summary judgment. We did get summary judgment. You know what he said to me? He says, Bill, you know what we're going to do? We're, I'm going to sue you, okay? And he threatened to sue me, okay? And why did he threaten to sue me? Why was he doing what he, he was a bully, okay? I was not in a very good place in my business career. I was under investigation by Elliot Spitzer. I was winding down my fund. There was negative press about uh, Gotham Partners at the time. I was, I was short MBIA. They were very aggressively attacking me in the press. And Carl Icahn thought, you know what, this guy's roadkill on the hedge fund highway. I'm never going to have to worry about this kid again. He's not going to even have the resources to sue me. So I'm just not going to pay him. And by the way, the number of stories I have heard from bankers, from lawyers, from uh, people he's uh, transacted with, with where he's done similar kinds of things to take advantage of someone. Well, the fortunate thing in life is I told Carl I would go to the end of the earth to make sure he paid my investors. This was not my money. These were my investors' money. Every penny that he owed me with interest. And we got. And I went to the end of the day. He tried to settle with me. He offered $10 million to my favorite charity over a dinner that we yeah, had I mean, at his favorite Italian restaurant. Here, like, you, and, you know, hey, what's his name? The guy. Hello? Okay, anyway, so, uh, again, I think this is not a great use of uh, CNBC airtime. Well, let's, let's, what let's, I can let's tell make... you is th this is not an honest guy, and this is not a guy who keeps his word, and this is a guy who takes, takes advantage of little people. That's what Let, let's, let's make good use of it, th th or better use of it then. Um, Carl, wh why, don't, why don't you just come clean on, on the Herbalife thing? Um, are, are you long or not? Right? I mean, the whole market knows hey, listen, or suspects hey, listen, that you are. I didn't, get on, I didn't get on to be bullied by you, okay? If I could talk, let me talk, but I don't need you to... Hello? Just yeah, I'm here. I'm, I'm, no, one, no one's bullying you, Carl. I mean, I'm just, you know, you're the one who called in to, to, to our show to talk to Bill Ackman, and the, hey, the no, principal no, issue is me. the Herbalife hey, thing. Hey, 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 listen to me. I was called in by Max Meyer to have a conversation, not to argue right. with you. All right? If you, if you want to take... Hello? Yeah, we're me? listening. Well, if you're listening, let me talk. I did... I, you know, I want to say what I want to say, and I'm not going to talk about my Herbalife position because you want to bully me. All right? I'm not bullying Let's you. I'm start. asking the question everybody wants to know, Carl. That's well, all. But I you can make your statement. I don't what you want to know. I'm going to talk about what I want to talk about. And okay. if you want to take that position, I'll never go on CNBC, you know? So you can say what the hell you want, but okay. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to talk about what Ackman just said about me, not about Herbalife. And I'll talk about Herbalife when I go want to, not when you ask me. Okay. And I'm never going on a show with you again, that's for damn sure, okay? So let's start with what I want to say. Ackman is a liar, okay? To begin with, I've lived my life from 1960s and 70s by handshakes. I almost lost my firm a few times by handshakes. Ackman has a, has, he does pump and dumb. He's got one of the worst reputations on Wall Street. And I'm going to tell you this herbal life is a classic example of what he does. Let, let's look at Herbalife. Ackman was doing badly in 2012. He was down 2 3%. He probably woke up in the morning and said, let's see what company we can destroy and put out a, sh a bear raid on it. It's happened from the, late, from the late 80s till now. And go do a bear raid, kill the stock, and now we can show our investors we made more money. And by the way, if we can mark these things and make more money, he says that he's not taking the profit, but that gives him a, a, better, a better rate of return for himself. Ackman has done that. If you read the articles about him, he's done it all his life. And I will swear to you, and I don't, I don't need, we didn't make a lot of money on this, uh, this, this crazy thing I did with him. We made four million, but I was incensed because I will tell you that without question, I will swear to it on any Bible you want that I had a verbal agreement with him 
that he was not going to get any piece of the money. And at the end, he was, as he said, he was in major, major trouble, and he's basically lying. He was in major trouble, and he said, look, I'm not going to take any of the profits, but there's one thing I will do. I don't want you just flipping the stock in a couple of weeks, a couple of months, or whatever it was, and therefore put that in. We didn't flip the stock. The agreement, we thought, unfortunately, said that it only applies to flipping the stock. And unfortunately, the agreement wasn't well written. My lawyer is a great lawyer, but well, this one was missed. So we go in into that. And I'll tell you something. As far as I'm concerned, he wanted to have dinner once with me. I had dinner with him, and I got to tell you, I left. I couldn't figure out if he was the most sanctimonious guy I ever met in my life or the most arrogant. And that's Ackman. And that's the last time I met with the guy. I don't want to meet with, oh, yeah. And when it comes to friends, he called me and said, hey, I'd like, you know, if we were friends, we could make a lot of money investing together. And I, I knew that even if I wasn't friends, I never would invest with this guy because I tell you, the guy takes inordinate risks. Carl, let, let me, let me, let me, let me um, if, if I may. What the hell I want to say. You let, you let Ackman talk, so let me talk. Uh, you've okay? been talking. Okay, you can continue. Okay, thank you. And, and, and I will tell you that Ackman takes inordinate risk. He, he goes short. 20% of a company goes out there, and I'll tell you, this could be the mother of all short squeezes. And, and, and I'm going to tell you this, that one day, if somebody, if somebody tenders for this company and wants all their stock back, what's Ackman going to do? He's going to be just, you know, history repeats itself. He'll be back where he was in 2003 with all the guys redeeming. And where is he going to get the, the money and the stock for that? But that's not even my issue. I don't, I don't have an investment with Ackman. I wouldn't have an investment with Ackman if you paid me to do it, if Ackman paid me to do it. And, and you know, Ackman's reputation is second to none. Nobody, nobody uh, as far as I was concerned, I made a huge mistake getting involved with him. And what is even worse, that after he even won, you know, after he won, he, 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 he planted some article in the New York Times, pounded his chest to tell him, telling the world how great he was and you know as far as i'm concerned the guy is, is a major loser you know disraeli once said disraeli once said uh, uh, about somebody that spoke in the parliament a young guy spoke in the parliament young man i'd be happy i'd be happy if i could be assured of one thing in my life as you are sure of everything if you ever listen to ackman he'll tell you what to do how to do it where to go i i was Dizzy after having dinner with him. Here's right, where Carl? you should give you money, what you should do. Okay, listen, it's stupid I... to keep going over it, but I will tell you one day yeah. that I think HALF could be the mother of all uh, short squeezes. That's, uh, that's not me saying it. But Ackman did it. Look at the timing. Ackman did it with a, a week to go or a month to go before he had to show in his results. His results were bad for 2012, and this got his results up double so he could get fees for himself. And then he talks about charity. That's complete bull****. He's not giving it to charity. He's got, his limited partners right. aren't going to give it to charity. That's assuming they don't need charity themselves. Now, that's Carl, what I'll say about Ackman, okay? Let me, let me remind you that we are on live television. Um, so that was an interesting choice of words. But let, let me let me do this. Let me do this. I mean, uh, and the, the, the guys right, on the trading I, floor I, down here at the New York Stock Exchange I to, clearly I need, I need appreciated it well. Just, just address a few specific things because uh, <laughs> can I just say a couple things and we'll yeah, move on. All right, the last thing, just to clear the record, okay? So Pershing Square was not having a bad year in 2012, and Herbalife did not double our returns. Okay, so it's just... What? I can't hear what you said, Bill. I'm sorry. I can't hear you. <laughs> Carl, you and I can talk offline. We're wasting the world's uh, time on this thing. Okay. Um, so uh, I, I think that uh, Carl either has a very, very bad memory or he has trouble with the truth. Uh, we have a very we, – because we didn't make a verbal agreement on Hallwood, we made a written one. He's got very good lawyers, as he says. I asked, Just read the agreement. The agreement we put on the web. It's a 10-page mm -hmm. agreement. Carl can say what he wants today about what he thought he said back then. But this was much more important to me than it was to Carl. And uh, obviously, we read the agreement. Carl's a big boy. He signed the agreement. And then we had several courts conclude that we were right, and he held us up as long as he could. The big issue about Carl Icahn is he's not used to someone standing up to him. And, I, and particularly a little guy like me in 2003 was in a difficult spot. And by the way, we did nothing wrong, but we, we criticized a uh, big public company, and uh, they had more resources than we did. They made our life very miserable. We were investigated. Um, but the benefit of investigation is we were exonerated. And ultimately, we got our due on MBIA. The world realized we were right. The stock went from the 70s to you know, single dollars per share. The CDS went to what? a couple thousand. 
uh, basis points, and we made a lot of money for our investors. And I gave $150 million, which was my share of the profits from the MBIA investment to the Pershing Square Foundation, and we've given away more than that. I'm going to do the same thing all over again with Herbalife. Okay, Herbalife is going to try to attack my integrity. Carl can try to orchestrate a short squeeze. He can do whatever he wants. Okay, he can try to scare my investors from investing with me, which it sounds like he's attempting to do on this call. We take prudent risks at Pershing Square. We're an unlevered fund, uh, and we are very thoughtful in the way that we do our business. I'm going to end my. You know, I, I told Carl after the whole thing he called me up, and he literally said, "You know, Bill, we can be friends now." Okay, I wish I had a recording of the conversation. I simply said to him, "I said, look, Carl, you." are no friend of mine, and and that was it. And uh, and uh, every time, so he goes on TV, he wants to slander me. I'm going to defend myself. I, I never said that I want to be friends with with you, Bill. I wouldn't okay. be friends okay, with Carl. you. And okay. I would, you said okay, to me you'd you'd like to be friends so that we could invest together. Uh, Carl, I have no interest. Uh, do you think I want to invest with you? Okay, let's let's I move on. I would invest with you. Let, if let's you move were the on. Last man on earth. Let's move on. <laughs> Carl, Carl, let me let me just ask you though. I mean, the the, the crux of the, the the argument doesn't really go back, or, or doesn't so much focus on on ten years ago, or maybe it does. It, it focuses on the most recent history, and that is Bill Ackman's short play on Herbalife. You criticized him quite heavily for the way in which he, he went public with the short. Would, would you be willing to admit that in the past, I mean, look, you, you've got sharp elbows as well. You, you've got weight to throw around too. That it, That's the way of the short world, isn't it, Carl? Hey, listen, if I'm going to admit it, I'm not going to, that I own stock, I'm not going to admit it with a guy like you on the TV because I don't think you've, you've been handling this fairly. I think you're trying to attack me and, and bully me into admitting something. And so you expect me to do it on your show? No, I'm not. I, uh, I'd like to ask you a question. If you okay. think you're going to bully me into doing it, yeah. you seem like a nice enough guy. I don't think I've ever been on a show with you, but I don't think I take the bullying. So do um, you think that you're okay. giving me all this bull****? Hey, and Max Meyer said I could say what I wanted on the show, so I'm saying it. All right. Hey, we'll send, we'll send Max the, uh, the bill. You on your show after you try bullying me and coming okay. up against me, do you? All right. Well, I, let, I let me... I'm known. Hey, look. I think... Let, no, 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 no. Wait, 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 Carl. Let, let me That's just say, true. first of all, let right. me you say, know, Carl. Maybe I'm not. I don't like being bullied. But I am I, not. I have... I believe... Nobody here, nobody here is bullying you, first and foremost. Second of all, well, I know, simply asked you... I said, uh, Let me finish, please. I simply asked you... in and start arguing about the guy who was 10 years ago... Why the heck are you getting involved in it? I, I simply asked you to reveal whether you were long Herbalife, as the world wants to know, and the motives behind it. That's all I, we want to know. That's what every person watching this program well, I, wants you know, to know. And if that position is in okay, all... Can I answer? Can I answer? Yeah. You, well, you want yeah. to keep talking? I'm going no, to answer it, it to you. Yeah. Max Meyer called me up. He said, Ackman is making all these aspersions about you. He's going to come on saying you're the worst man in the world. Do you want to go on TV? I said, yeah, that's why he came on. But right. I'm going to tell you about Herbalife. And I'll tell you what I will tell you and what I said before. Uh, 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 you know, I think Ackman did Herbalife because I don't, I, I obviously don't like Ackman. Ackman is lying about what happened. I didn't need the four million bucks I made there. What incensed me was that he weaseled out of the deal. Now, we'll leave that alone. You're right. Half of ten years ago, leave it alone. But he weaseled out of it, and I'll tell you that. But, and, 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 you know, I'm known as a tough guy, but I think if you take my handshake, you live by it. There's nobody said that I ever went back on a handshake. So now let's go back in, into Herbalife. I, I'm reading again what uh, uh, was in the New York Times by uh, uh, Morganson. In the Times it says, uh, that she, she said that, that he does that, that uh, Gotham's publication upbeat research pub, publication of upbeat research about one company even as the fund was quietly selling its shares now, that's what he did that's what the paper said and right now I believe I, and I'm not going to the SEC or the FTC but I believe he goes out and he has 300 people in a room this is the typical Ackman. I wouldn't care if it was anybody else but Ackman. But he goes in this room, and he gets 300 people, and he tells them how bad this company is. It's the classic stuff they did in the 90s. You, 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 you scare the hell out of people, get the stock down. He marks the stock on December 31st and makes 600 million bucks on paper and tells the world how great he is. He's given to charity. 
and shows the world he's made 12 percent, which isn't so great anyway. I'd like to say we made 28 percent last year without going and having to go pump and dump stocks and having to go and have rooms full of people. And, and in 2011, uh, at the risk of being a modest, we made 33 percent without having to do what I consider to be manipulation. OK, and that's what he did in Herbalife. And if it wasn't if it wasn't Ackman. I wouldn't give it, you know, I'm, I'm not here to change the world, but this is what he did. He got a, a bunch of inve in, innocent investors, retirees, they're going to lose their money so Ackman could show a good record at the end of the year. And by the way, took an inordinate risk because in a company like Herbalife, you can ask almost any pro, you don't go 20% and, but what the hell, he's not risking his money, he's risking his investors' money. You go in and you got 20% and if there's ever a short squeeze, which uh, well might be, in herbal life, what the hell does he do? I'd like him to answer. Where does he get the stock to 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 when they call back all the stock? Let's say there's a tender offer for herbal life, and they call back the stock. And if you know, if you know Wall Street, when there's a tender offer, everybody calls back the stock you borrowed. And if they ever does it, that stock could rush to a hundred. What the hell does Ackman do? I ask him. He's on the phone. He's right here on the phone. I'm, hey, happy, Bill, I'm happy to answer if I get a chance to speak. There's a short squeeze. <laughs> okay, a couple, couple of interesting things. Number one... And, and Bill, let me just say quick, we have to be quick because we're at the end of our, okay. our road here, okay? Okay, so number one, Carl's free to make a tender offer for the company. Carl, you want to bid for the company? Go ahead and bid for the company. Hey, hey, you don't have okay. to tell me what I'm free to do. Okay, I well, okay. <laughs> maybe you okay, don't, that's but number one. Do. Number two, obviously, we don't think there's going to be a tender offer for the company. We don't think this company is viable, okay? We don't think any person is going to write a check for 5 or $6 billion to buy a business that we believe is fraudulent, okay? That's number one. Number two, Carl Icahn says it, he doesn't like this behavior, says it's bad. Meanwhile, 2003 at the Iris Zone conference in front of 500 people, Carl Icahn pitched Trinity Industries, which he was short, and he was short 22% of the outstanding shares, according to Fortune magazine. Carl, you can tell us whether that's true or false, but you did precisely that, so I find it interesting that you have an issue with what we did in Herbalife. In Herbalife, we simply provided to the public full transparency on this investment, 330 slides in detail, not scaring people, but going through the facts about the company. Okay, we did exhaustive research over a year and a half. Scaring people okay. you could have fooled. And we will be either proven right or we'll be proven wrong. Okay, we shorted the stock. We have not covered our shares. We believe in what we've, and we have more to come, by the way. So uh, right. we, have, uh, we, we have some questions that the company has given us the opportunity to ask. And we will have responses for every issue they raised in their res responsive presentation to us. And what I thank Carl for is he certainly helped highlight Herbalife and the issues at Herbalife. And I don't, my guess is that Carl bought Herbalife if he did, because that's what he, someone at his shop leaked to the press, and he flipped it out when the stock went up, and he made a good trade. Congratulations on a good trade. I don't believe there's any real investor who can own this business long term, because we believe it's a pyramid scheme. We believe we can prove that to a wait, high wait. degree of certainty. Right. Hey, uh, I, I appreciate, Bill, that you called me a great investor. I thank you for that. Unfortunately, I can't say the same for you, but I'd like Look, to ask you, congratulations on what good trade. I, I, I sort of missed that. Let me, guys, we're, we're going we're gonna to end it there. Um, Bill, I so much appreciate you coming on today. Carl, uh, I hope you'll come back. Uh, that's all I can say. Uh, it was uh, a good conversation, and it wasn't well, anybody's. I, I hear that. I, heard, I didn't hear you tell me that you appreciated me coming on. <laughs> Uh, well, I think it was um, obviously uh, meant there when I said, I hope you'll come back. Right? I mean, all right. On. All right. Thanks very much. Okay, I appreciate thanks. it. And have a good day. Okay. All right. Thanks. Till Ackman, Carl Icahn. We'll go to break and then Power Lunch will pick up the ball. Starting a new business, venture, and project can be daunting, but with the right team, anything is possible. Is it time to get started on turning your brand ideas into an exciting work in progress? Fiverr is offering its Fiverr Business Annual Membership at 100% free for the whole first year. You deserve to make 2021 the first step in your giant leap towards success. Fiverr Business gives you full access to their hand-picked catalog of top freelance talents, as well as a fully integrated collaborative environment. Fiverr Business gives you the tools you need to launch, scale, and manage your startup from just about anywhere in the world. But that's not all. Fiverr stands as one of the most efficient scaling solutions trusted by startups and small businesses across the globe, thanks to the cost-effective pricing of most freelancers on the platform. To learn more, click the link below and sign up for your free Fiverr business account.